Please consider this a formal invitation that you are cordially invited to attend this discussion on the precise definition of limits from section 2.6. We're going to focus on three and I want you to be able to I want you I want you to know these definitions and be able to demonstrate the definition like I'm doing now. The secret to all these is besides doing the homework is to draw pictures. That's the key and it's also the secret. Look at the, this first one. As x goes to infinity, the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals l. You know the y values have to be getting close to l, so arbitrarily close to l. l plus epsilon, l minus epsilon. As x gets bigger, they have to get closer to l. How close? Arbitrarily close. So what that means is if you were to extend this, delta, this epsilon interval around l, there has to be a cutoff value, this x value, n. So that if x is beyond that cutoff value, any x value that's beyond that n, the y value has to be in that band. And that's what the definition says. Limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals l means no matter how close to l you want to make it, you can do that by finding this cutoff value n on the x-axis. And, and so that if x is beyond that cutoff value, the y values will be within epsilon of l. So you should be able to demonstrate, you should know that definition, and you should be able to de demonstrate that definition like, like this. Um, this is just another way of saying the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x over x plus 1 equals 2. I know that because you see this x greater than n, that, that means x is getting big on the positive side, isn't it? This is your function, this is your limit, this is your ep epsilon. So the picture might look kind of like this. 2x over x plus 1. Even though that has a vertical asymptote at negative 1, I'm not really, I don't really care about that right now. I'm, I'm interested in what the graph does to the right. We know when x is 0, y is 0, and as x gets bigger, I believe this is, this is getting closer to 2, isn't it? So it looks kind of like that. And so this would be 2. And since epsilon is 0.1, this would be 2.1, and this would be 1.9. And what you want to do in this case is find this cutoff value n. Well, you know that f of n has to equal 1.9, right? So you know that 2n over n plus 1 uh, has to equal 1.9. If you cross multiply, you get that 2n is 1.9n plus 1.9. And then if you subtract 1.9n, you get 0.1n equals 1.9 and then if you divide by 0.1 you get that n equals 19. Now what does that mean? That means uh, at n equal 19 for this epsilon if x is beyond that the y value will always be in that band and I bet you would agree that the smaller the epsilon is let's go back to this picture the smaller the epsilon is probably the bigger n has to be huh? Anyway, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Let's, let's do a couple more. This next one is the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals infinity. What, the, what does that say? Well, as x gets big, f of x gets big. How big does f of x have to get? Arbitrarily big. So what does that mean? Remember, the secret of this section is to draw a picture, and you can kind of figure out what the precise definition means. Well, if f of x is getting arbitrarily big, that means for any m, no matter how big, big positive number, you have to be able to find this cutoff point n on the x-axis so that if x is beyond that cutoff point, then the y values are all going to be above m. And that's what the definition says. Limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals infinity means no matter how high you, no matter what arbitrarily big positive number you have, there is an n on the x-axis so that if x is beyond that value of n, all the y values are above that m on the y-axis. One would think that the bigger the m, the bigger the n, right? Anyway, so let's look at this example. So uh, you know x is going to infinity here because it says x is greater than n. This is just saying that the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared plus 5 equals infinity because the y values are getting bigger than this positive number. This is your m, by the way. So the graph might look kind of like this. x squared plus 5 looks kind of like that. I'm really interested in the part to the right. And m is 1,000, so 
I want to find this cutoff value n. How do you do it? Well, again, f of n has to equal 1,000. So n squared plus 5 has to equal 1,000. So n squared has to equal 995. So when you take the square root, remember we want the positive one, so it's the positive square root of 995. That's what n is. So when x is greater than that, the y value will be above 1,000. Pretty cool, huh? Let's do one more. This one says the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is l. So if you look at the picture, as x is going to the left, the y values are getting close to l. Okay, well, it's getting, the y values are getting close to l. How close to l? Arbitrarily close to l. So that means if this is l plus epsilon, and this is l minus epsilon, if you look at this band, eventually all the f of x's have to be in that band. Again, you have to find a cutoff. This is an x value, so that if x is beyond that to the left, the y value will be in that band. That's, that's what the definition says. The limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals l means no matter how close you want to make f of x to l, you can do that by finding a cutoff value n on the x-axis so that if, if x is to the left of it, all the y values are within epsilon units of l. In this case, uh, the function is 1 over x squared. Notice x is less than n. That, that's what tells you that x is going to negative infinity. And the limit is 0. Notice this is f of x minus l inside the absolute value, so l has to be 0. And the epsilon is 0.1. So the graph looks kind of like this. 1 over x squared uh, looks like this. We're not interested in that part. We want to know about this part. So epsilon is 0.1, so this would be 0 0.01 would be epsilon. Negative epsilon would be negative 0 0.01. So eventually, all the f of x's have to be in that band by finding this value n. One more time, the way you find n is you note that f of n, in this case, has to equal 0 0.01. f of n is 1 over n squared. 1 over 0 0.01, isn't that 1 over 100? So then it, that says that n squared equals 100. We're looking at the negative value of n, so negative 10 would be the value. That's the cutoff point, so that if x is to the left of there, the y values will be in that band. Okay, well, uh, the last thing I want to mention is um, there's a total of six limits that I want you to be able to do this with. The first, the, we, we just did 3 and 2.6. The other three we already did. Th that's from section 2.4. I want to go over those really quick, quickly. Um, but again, what is the secret? The secret in understanding these limits, this formal definition of limits, is to draw the picture. And you should be able to create the formal definition if you draw the picture right. We, we've done this one a lot. The limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l. How close to l? Arbitrarily close to l. So if this is l plus epsilon, l minus epsilon, you have to be able to find an interval around a Um, a delta interval, so that if x is in that interval, except possibly equal to a, of course, if x is in that interval, the f of x has to be in the epsilon interval around l. So from that, you, you, you can write the def definition. The other two, limit as x goes to a of f of x equals infinity, um, means, this is on page 116 in your book, uh, the y values have to be getting very large. How large? arbitrarily at large. So for any m, right, as x gets close to a, so you have to be able to find a delta interval around a, so that what? If x is anywhere in that delta interval, except possibly a itself, the f of x will be above m. Last one, what does it mean to say the limit as x goes to a of f of x is negative infinity? Well, here the function values have to be getting very, very low. So how low? arbitrarily low. So for any n, you have to be able to find again a delta interval, a plus delta, a minus delta, so that if x is in that delta interval around a, the f of x is in, is, is below n. And with that, I would like to formally say goodbye.